Alright, what's going on guys? So today I have a very special video. We're gonna dive into the Adobe Lightroom mobile app. You guys have been asking for a tutorial on this because I've been doing the desktop versions. Many of you have the Lightroom mobile version, which is pretty similar, but it can be very different as well. And my workflows for both kind of vary with my situation. So let's jump on in. So we'll open up Lightroom. And as you can see, we have these six photos here in this folder. And we have a few kind of sunset shots and a few snow shots. So when it comes to mobile editing, my workflow kind of varies, as I said before. I don't use any presets. They have their stock presets in here. If you look here, you can see that there's there's a bunch in there. I prefer not to use them because I do my own thing. The biggest part about editing just in general is finding your kind of style and finding the colors that you like inside the photo. It may take you a little bit longer to figure out like the adjustments and what looks good because I can throw on a bunch of effects, I can throw on a bunch of colors and different settings and then end up changing it when I get back home or whatever. So it always varies. So for this first photo we're at Mammoth Mountain and as you can see my body's extremely dark, the sky is a little overexposed up in that section and the ground it's it's white but it's not as bright as we want so when you open up light you have the auto adjustment that is Lightroom's automatic reading on your pixels and it, it adjusts it accordingly so you don't crush the blacks or clip the whites. And you have exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And then you also have the S-curve adjustment that you can kind of just manipulate and make it however you like. And if you don't already know what exposure and all these things are, jump to my previous video. It's probably like three, two or three back. And I explain all that through there. So with this, we want to increase exposure, but not too much so we lose detail in the snow and in my body. We want it just enough so the snow is bright, but then my body isn't losing detail with that. So we'll go about there. Contrast, I'll always bring up with that. Bring up the highlights, bring up the shadows to make it a little bit softer in my body. And as you can see already, we went from really dark to popping, but my body's still dark. And then we can go into the curve tone, and we could drop the blacks, raise the midtones, and then raise the whites a bit. And if you want to delete one of these points, you just double tap it, and it'll adjust it for you. So we'll go back. We can even crush those blacks a bit. So now with just that one section of Adobe Lightroom, we went from this to this. And I could easily leave this, but we want to work with the actual colors. So we'll jump into color, and you can go through and you go black and white. You can go through the white balance, the temperature, the tints, vibrant saturation. And then you also have the HSL, which is all through here, which is probably one of my favorite tools on the Lightroom app, or the mobile app, because you can easily click one of the colors and adjust all three in an instant. So we'll bump up the temperature a bit, but not too much. We just want some warmth in the trees in the background. Then we can go up to vibrance and drop the saturation a bit. So there we go already seeing major improvement with that. Then we can go into the HSL and like I said we want the oranges to be up. You can mess with the brightness with it. You can see like on my glove and my face is getting light and dark so we'll probably make it a little bit darker. Yellows you can see that it's being shown in the trees. So we'll drop that as well. Greens aren't really present. Blue is present on my jacket, but we don't really want to mess with that. So there's that. If we can go into clarity, kind of make it a little bit softer. Add a tiny bit of vignette. And then we can go into the split tone. We can make the highlights on the orange side, shadows on the blue. I'm not a huge fan of this because I believe you can't adjust the saturation on this. I may be wrong. I don't see anything for it. Maybe it's like that. Oh, actually, that looks more like it. Huh, learn something every day. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, so the saturation's right there. You can see the S and the S right there. So that's just that there, just that there. There we go. And then we can go back into this and then just take off the orange. Yeah, that looks really good. 
Actually, you can mess with the purple. I see a little bit of purple in the snow. And then maybe even add... There we go. Took about four minutes to go through and get it all done. Then the next photo. This is at June Mountain. And we're in the middle of a snowstorm, so it's all cloudy. There's no sunlight. So we'll go through and do the same thing. And now, this photo, compared to the other one, we can crank the crank the exposure up even higher because we don't have to worry about the sun and losing detail on that. And we can just go crazy with the whites and the blacks. So we'll do the same thing, go through, bump all that up, bring down the blacks, bring up the whites, bring down the highlights a bit because we don't want it to be too crazy. Go to the curve, do the same thing. Drop into color, bring up the temperature a bit, yellows, oranges, let's see, yeah, we want the yellows to be down, then the oranges to be up, but then a little bit darker, bring saturation to the red, because we have the board down there, and there we have it. We went from a really gloomy, dark photo, because of the settings that I use, you don't allow much light in, so we can do this specific thing, and we went from that to a nice, popping, bright, and vibrant picture. Let's see if I can show you the details on here. Yeah. So the Hero 5 Black, ISO 100. And this was shot on timeout mode. On to the next one. We have the same kind of thing where out in the mountains, you kind of have the sun peeking out in the background. So we'll do the same thing. Exposure up to bring some more detail through. Contrasts, highlights, shadows, whites. Drop those blacks. And you can just see the image is just bright and vibrant. We don't have too much color in this, but you can see that we go from a dull looking photo and we bump it up a lot more. So we'll bring the blacks down, mid-tones up, and then the whites up. And I'm pretty happy with that result. I actually enjoy that a lot, but we can try to mess with the color. So we can add some temperature to that, bring out the orange and the yellows. So it's a little cool. We can also take out the blue in the lake, the river, bring that down, drop the blacks. If we want to fake sunlight through the trees, we can go through and select gradient filter, go up to color, bring out the temperature, drop it down, and just adjust it as we go. And there we are. Now we have the cool water down below, then we have the warmer trees up above, and we just bring out the whites and the blacks and kind of make them contrast together. The next photo, we're at the beach, and we have pretty crazy sunset, one of the crazier ones we've had in a while down at Huntington, and we'll do the same thing. But for the DSLR, I like to bring the contrast down, just to add a little bit of a fading film look, bring the exposure up, highlights up, shadows up, whites up and then we'll do the blacks up. Actually, we'll do the blacks down for now. Then we'll go into the tone curve. Blacks down, mid-tones up, and then we'll crush those blacks. And as you can see already, the image is popping, but it's not overwhelming. We, we want to keep it subtle, especially for these DSLR shots. And we can mess with the temperature, make it a little bit warmer. Could bring that out, but darken it. Add some saturation there. We don't want too much blue. And there we go. Add some vignette. Bring on the clarity to make it softer. And then for this photo especially, since we want to bring attention to the sunset, we can go into the gradient filter, drop it down, add some tint, add some or add some temperature. And then we can go into contrast, highlights, and blacks, drop that down, and then add some more tint. Add the dehaze to make it a little bit darker. And we brought out the pinks and the warmer tones in the sky, and then we also have a darker, kind of subtle image down below. So I really enjoy that look right there. I really like editing both GoPro and DSLR because the DSLR gives you a more artistic kind of view. And then GoPro is just 
that's always sick. Like the photos always come out super great. And then now we're on to another GoPro shot. Now this is pretty late in the afternoon. You can see the sun's just about to go over the horizon. So we don't have too much light on the ground. Well, we can easily fix that just by doing that. <laughs> Bring up the exposure, contrast, drop down the highlights if we want. Bring up the shadows, but then make sure you bring down the blacks. And then go into the tone curve. Same kind of deal. We don't want to mess with the whites because the sky is already overexposed, but because we do that, it blends in really well. So there's no point to lose the detail on the right when we want to blend in the sun on the left. So we'll go into color and we'll bring it up just a little bit for the temperature. Go into the mix, bring out those oranges even bring out those yellows. We want to make those yellows a little bit brighter. Make the orange bright. And we can make the sky a little subtle on the right with the blue. So we went from this dark image to this bright and popping photo. But the only problem with this is that the yellow is overwhelming with the green. So we can go into our color tool, the HSL, and we can adjust the hue of the yellow. And as you can see, far right is green, far left is orange, close to red. And then we'll bring that down a bit towards the orange and the red. Bring down the saturation to kind of make it sit in the background. And there we go. And then onto the next one is another GoPro shot from the cliffs. So farther down the road from there. And with this, I went straight into exposure, contrast, highlights. Actually bring those highlights down because I don't want my legs to be all shiny. I don't want to lose the detail and that in the sun. So we'll go up to shadows, bring the shadows out from my legs and then the ground around me. Bring up the whites a bit just cause. Bring down the blacks. Then we'll go into the tone curve. Drop down the blacks, bring up those mid-tones, but then we'll just drop those whites just a bit. Go into the color, make it a little bit warmer. Bring the saturation down a bit, bring down the luminance, and we can see that the yellow kind of looks good right about there, maybe a little darker. We can go back in here and adjust it around. Add some vignette for it. The optics don't really change that much on this photo, it just stretches my legs, which I'm not a huge fan of. <laughs> and we can go back into the tone curve, maybe bring down those blacks a bit, bring up that. And there we have it. We go from this dull image again, and we just bring it out. My editing styles change over the years. I used to go for all these crazy colors and crazy tones and just try to like imitate as many people as possible, and like that's a good thing, like trying to find inspiration from others. But I found that over time, as I started taking more photos and started editing more, keeping it really minimal and simplistic is often the best. Like, you don't want your clarity to be all the way up, and if so, you're going to have this crazy sharp looking image that doesn't really look real. I like keeping my photos as real as possible, and obviously if you want to be artistic and crush the black super hard so you have just silhouettes and crazy colors, go for it. But for me, I very rarely adjust the sky color, I very rarely adjust everything else. I just like to keep it as I saw it and kind of enhance it more to make the colors look nicer. So yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys learned a lot from this. I'm really stoked to be able to put these kinds of videos out for you guys. Hit me up on social media, leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on this to make my videos better and to be able to give some more input to you guys. So yeah, keep it easy. Peace.